Miller. Two minutes left to go in that ball game. The winner of that ball game faces the winner of this one. Right now, the Rock Valley Rockets have taken control of the ball game, lead by six. They may pull it out and try to take some air out of the basketball. Rock Valley with it in the right corner. Passes over to Aaron Johnson. Johnson bounce pass inside. It goes to Lang. Lang turned around up off the glass. No good. And the rebound taken down by Dan Anderson. Anderson over to Den Beston. Den Beston with the basketball into the front court. Seven and a half left to go in regulation. Bounce pass over to Jansma. Jansma with the ball. Inside it goes to... Well, it goes to Kelderman. Now we've got a jump ball situation. Alternate possession. And it'll stay with the Boyden Hall Comets, I believe. Boyden Hall Comets get the ball on the alternate possession. And I'll wait for word on that final score, Bob Grody, as we will have that 1A substate ball game on the air for you. West Bend Mallard, you remember, came into the ball game with just one loss. Passes over to Jansen. Jansen Jansen with the basketball, moving baseline, puts up the short jumper. No good, but he is fouled. And we've got a push called against Terry Dykstra, or pardon me, Matt Dykstra. Matt Dykstra called for foul number two. And Troy Jansen to the free throw line to shoot free throws. Jansma has not scored this evening. First free throw on the way for the junior is up and good. Looks like he's a player you want at the free throw line when you need him as he strokes that one right through. And another free throw on the way for Jansma is up and off the front of the rim. No good. And the rebound down to Dykstra. Just like that, I jinxed him. Here comes Ranshaw with the basketball for Rock Valley. Rockets with the ball, top of the key, it goes over to Dykstra, swing it back over to Ranshaw. Ranshaw left wing with it inside, it goes to Lang. Lang muscles it up off the glass and good. Jesse Lang has been very tough to stop all night, and the Boyden Hall Comets have not found a way to stop him yet here in the second, third, and beginning of the fourth quarter as he has 18 points, 16 of them coming since the second quarter. Den Destin with the basketball over to Anderson. Anderson off the glass up and good. Dan Anderson with 19 points to lead the Comets. And the Comets trail by five. 38-33, 6.25 left to go in regulation. Passes over to Ranshaw. Swing it around to Dykstra. Dykstra left side over to Johnson. Johnson back over to Dykstra. Swing it back to Johnson. Johnson on the left wing. Rock Valley trying to get a little ball movement going. Passes right side over to Ranshaw. Ranshaw directing traffic from the top of the key. Looking to pick up a screen. Picks up a screen from Jesse Lang. They run a little pick and roll play between the two players. Ball tips in. Coming up with it is Troy Jansma. Rock Valley tried to force the ball into their big man. Jesse Lang. And the Boyden Hall Comets end up with the turnover. Shot is up by Western. No good. Rebound down to Kelderman. Kelderman up off the glass. No good. Rebound tipped, and we've got a foul called against Dan Anderson. Anderson whistled for foul number three. That's foul number five against the Boyden Hall Comets. Nate Dornboss to check back into the ballgame in place of Troy Jansma. 5.46 left to go in regulation. A lot of time left, but Rock Valley right now in the driver's seat. Aaron Johnson to check into the ballgame for the Rock Valley Rockets or pardon me, he checked out of the ball game. And the Rock Valley Rockets right now going with what is working. They have not brought their two players in that have two, well, now they brought Vin Kickerick back into the ball game, but they have not brought Mirbeek back into the game as of yet. Ranshaw will pull things out at half court, set things up. He's on the hash mark now. Right side with it, picks up his dribble, passes left side over to Van Kickerick, to Dykstra. Dykstra with the ball, passed out on top to Ranshaw. Ranshaw with the basketball, and we've got a kick called against Sean Kelderman. 5.19 left to go in this basketball game, in regulation at least. Inbounding the basketball, Bruce Van Kickerick passes over to Keith Ranshaw. Ranshaw to set the offense, swings it left side over to... Dykstra. Dykstra puts the ball on the floor down to the baseline, and he's going to be called for traveling. So the turnover gives the ball back to the Boyden Hall Comets. Length of the floor to go for the Comets. And Mark Denbeston will bring the ball into the front court. Boyden Hall trailing by five. Sean Kelderman with it on the left wing. Kelderman back over to Westra. Westra to Denbeston. Denbeston with the ball on the right wing. Den Beston guarded by Van Kickerick. Passes over to Kelderman. Kelderman looking inside. Gives it to Dan Anderson. Half hook up. No good. Rebound tipped. Taken by Dan Anderson. And he is fouled. 
And Dan Anderson will go to the free throw line to shoot two as he was fouled on the tip attempt. And the foul goes against Mark Wolfswinkel. Foul number three on him. And Dan Anderson, well, they say he will not shoot free throws. One and one situation for Dan Anderson. So one and one for Anderson here with 19 points. The Rock Valley fans making a lot of noise. Free throw is up off the side of the rim. No good. Rebound down to Kelderman. Kelderman head fake. Count the hoop. He'll go to the free throw line to shoot one. Sean Kelderman with three points now tonight. Trying to get the old-fashioned three-point play. 38 to 35 hour score. Boyd and Hall trying to claw their way back into this ball game after trailing by as many as six here in the fourth quarter. They trail by three now, 38-35, 4.42 left to go in this ball game. First free throw and only free throw for Kelderman is up and good. So Sean Kelderman makes the free throw, gets the three-point play, and the Rock Valley Rockets will send in a new ball player, Ryan Davilar. Boyd and Hall Comets trailing by two. Their fans are up on their feet. Rock Valley fans up on their feet. Four minutes and 35 seconds and counting. Keith Ranshaw, right wing with it. Now dribbles down to the corner, and we've got a foul called on the interior against Mark Den Baston. That's foul number three on Den Baston. And it was called on the post defense. Den Baston giving up about five or six inches at least to Jesse Lang. Passes over to Ben Kickerick. Ben Kickerick with it on the right wing. Ben Kickerick's into the lane, puts up the leaner, no good. Rebound tipped and taken by Jesse Lang down on the baseline. Kicks over to Ranshaw. Ranshaw back over to Ben Kickerick. Inside to Lang. Lang with the basketball. Shot up off the glass, no good. Rebound down to Dornboss. Dornboss, two players around him, gives over to Den Best, and Boyden Hall gets the basketball back. 4.05 left to go in the ballgame. Passes left side. Swing it around to Den Baston. Raw pass underneath, taken away by the Rock Valley Rockets. Rockets into the front court. Here's Ben Kickerick. Floater up off the glass. No good. Rebound out to Den Baston. Gives over to Wolber. Wolber with the basketball for the Boyden Hall Comets. Two point ball game. Boyden Hall with a two point lead. Passes over to Kelderman. He'll spot up. Three ball. Come on! Sean Kelderman has scored the last six points of the ball game for the Boyden Hall Comets. And the Comets take back a one-point lead on the three ball. Pass down to Jesse Lang. Lang working against Dornbach. Kicks it over to Der Ben Kickerick. Ben Kickerick's over to Davilar, swinging around to Dykstra. Back over to Ranshaw. Ranshaw trying the uh, inside move, and we've got a block foul called on Dan Anderson. Dan Anderson picks up foul number four on the play. Keith Ranshaw. On the floor right now, we'll make sure he's all right. He's been sucking wind all evening. I wouldn't be surprised to find out that he is ill. As the coaches have been motioned out onto the floor. Mike, I have a score with 6.6 seconds left. West Bend Mallard has a one point lead, 49 to 48, a barn burner over in Emmitsburg. He's been bent over a couple times trying to grasp for breath. And right now, Les Dalman does not want to take him out of the ballgame. Ranshaw doesn't do a whole lot of scoring, but he directs everything that happens on the floor for the Rock Valley Rockets. And right now, he is flat on his feet, trying to have some cramps worked out of his leg. And uh, we've got a momentary pause in the action. We'll be shooting free throws with the Rock Valley Rockets when we're back in 30 seconds. It's 8-10. One degree above zero here at the Kiowa Weather Center. And over in Emmitsburg, Wes Ben Mallard has a one-point lead with 6.6 .6 seconds left to play. They've got a barn burner going over in Emmitsburg. Wes Ben Mallard, 49. Grettinger, 48, with just 6.6 .6 seconds left in that contest. We're at two degrees at 8.11. This is KIWA, AM and FM from Sheldon, Iowa. Let's go back to Mike. And thank you very much, Bob Grody. They are still working on Keith Ranshaw. And Ranshaw will have to check out of the ballgame after the officials' timeout. And Les Dalma will be able to go to his bench, pick out a player to go in and shoot free throws. 
Well, now the officials say that he will not be shooting free throws. It was not on a shot attempt. And that is foul number six against the Boyden Hall Comets. Rock Valley will send Aaron Johnson into the ball game. And the Rock Valley fans wanting the two-shot situation. They aren't going to get it, though. They're still working on Ranshaw on the sideline. You hate to see that, especially in this type of ball game, where a player that's played the whole evening has to leave with the game on the line. Shot up, no good. Rebound fought for. Tips, and we've got a jump ball situation on the rebound. Dan Anderson and Bruce Van Kickerick tied up going after that rebound. The Rock Valley Rockets got the ball down low to Jesse Lang. Lang couldn't get the shots to drop, though. Boyden Hall with a one-point lead. Ball is inbounded over to Van Kickerick. Van Kickerick with the ball in the right corner. Van Kickerick's looking inside, gives over to Lang. Lang back over to Dykstra. Dykstra at the point guard now. Looks like a very versatile ball player for the Rock Valley Rockets. He'll swing into the lane. Short jumper is up and good. Where did that kid come from? He's got nine points in the, four, in the second half. And the Rock Valley Rockets with a one-point lead, 40 to 39, 245 and counting in regulation. Pass right side over to Sean Kelderman. Kelderman with the ball on the left wing. Passes over to Wolver. Wolver bounce pass over to Den Beston. Den Beston with the ball. Swings it over to Kelderman. He'll stroke the three. It's partially blocked. Rebound on to Den Beston. Then Beston gives over to Wolber. Wolber with the basketball. Boyden Hall, 227 left to go in the regulation. Wolber with the dribble. Bounce pass, or right side pass goes over to Dan Anderson. 220 and counting. Dan Anderson on the right wing over to Den Beston. Den Beston with the basketball. Back over to Wolber. 214 left to go. Pass right side over to Kelderman. Kelderman with the ball in the right corner. Kelderman back over to Wolber. Wolber on the right wing. 205 left to go in the game. Wolber with it. Gets the pass back from Kelderman. Right side pass back over to Den Beston. Den Beston with the basketball. Right side pass goes over to Kelderman. Shot in. We've got a foul called inside. And the foul is going to go against Jesse Lang. Jesse Lang picks up foul number two. And it'll be a two-shot foul situation for Dan Anderson with 156 left to go in the game. Foul number 10 on Rock Valley. Keith Ranshaw still hasn't come back into the ballgame for the Rock Valley Rockets. Two-shot situation here for Anderson. Free throw is up off the side of the rim. No good. Rock Valley giving Boyden Hall some free throw opportunities, but Boyden Hall not capitalizing. For the tie, this one's up. Rattles in and out. No good. Rebound on to Jesse Lang, and he is fouled by Nate Dorenbaugh. Doran Boss picks up foul number three. So Dan Anderson unable to convert either free throw. One of them would have tied. The other one would have given the lead. And we'll take the long walk to the other end of the floor and shoot free throws with Jesse Lang. One and one for Lang. Free throw up and no good. Rebound taken down by Wolber. Wolber with the basketball. He'll slow things up. 150 left to play. Wolber picks up his dribble on the right wing. Looking for somebody to pass to. Gives over to Kelderman. Kelderman will bounce it off the right side, and he is oh, kicked out of bounds. And the Boyden Hole Commons get the ball back. 142 left to go. Third or fourth quarter of action. Boyden Hall trailing by one, 40 to 39. Marked in, Baston to inbound. Looking for somebody to pass to. Gives over to Dan Anderson. Back over to Wolber. Wolber on the right wing with it. Wolber with the basketball, passes over to Den Beston. Den Beston, lob pass inside, tipped out, last touch by Rock Valley. It'll be Boyden Hall basketball, 132 left to go. Both teams with three timeouts left in this ball game. Den Beston to inbound, and he calls a timeout. Timeout on the floor, 132 left to play in the ball game. We'll be back with more in one minute. Number one. By a 50% margin. Chevy Lumina. The number one selling car in the tri-state. Dare to compare. The Ford Taurus and Honda Accord don't stack up to the value of the 96 Chevy Lumina. Lumina's over $1,400 less than Taurus and $4,200 less than Accord. That's the value you need. Plus, now get 4.8% financing. That's right, 4.8% APR for up to 48 months. On every new Lumina in stock. Lumina, the number one selling car in the tri-state. That's over $1,400 less than Taurus and over $4,200 less than Accord. And now, get low 4.8% 
4% financing. It doesn't get better than this. So see your Tri-State Chevy dealer today for 4.8% on Lumina. Genuine Chevrolet, Chevy Lumina. Number one in the Tri-States and priced to stay that way. Number one claim based on January to November 1995 on all registrations. Comparisons based on comparable for models. 4.8 on credit, limited time offer. See Hamill Motors on Highway 60 in downtown Sheldon. And, Mike, we do have a final. The last score I gave you ended up being the final. West Brim, Ben Mallard, 49. Grettinger, 48. There was 3.9 seconds left on the clock. Grettinger did have a chance for a last-second shot, but they missed it. And West Ben Mallard wins that game. Back to you. So West Ben Mallard, with just one loss, will advance on to the substate final to play either Rock Valley or Boyden Hall. Boyden Hall with the basketball here. One and a half left to go in regulation. Passes over to Den Baston, over to Kelderman. Kelderman in the left corner beyond the three-point arc. Picks up a screen, passes over to Wolber. Wolber with the basketball. Left side over to Den Baston. 117 left to go in this ball game. Pass right side over to Wolber. Wolber looking inside to Anderson. Back outside. Wolber with it. Down to the baseline. Kicks out to Den Baston. Swings it over to Kelderman. 105 left to go in the game. Passes back over to Wolber. Wolber with the basketball, top of the key. Wolber passes back over to Den Paston. It's Boyd and Hall going to hold for one shot here. Passes over to Kelderman. Kelderman, ball pass inside to Anderson. Shot is up and good. Dan Anderson with 21 points. And the Rock Valley Rockets trail by one. This one's going to go down to the wire, folks. Bunk pass right side to Van Kickerix. Van Kickerix with the ball. Passes over to Lang. Lang with the basketball. Back over to Van Kickerick. Back to Dykstra. Dykstra with the ball. Loses it on the floor. Falls on the floor. And we've got a foul call. And that's going to go against Dan Anderson. And that is foul number five on him. He will foul out of the ball game. And the Boyden Hall Comets will have to find somebody else to go inside. As Dan Anderson is disqualified on fouls. 21 points for Anderson. And five rebounds, so a subpar night on rebounding wise for Dan Anderson. Mitch Westra to check into the ballgame for the Boyden Hall Comets. And a one and one situation coming here for Matt Dykstra. Dykstra, just a 30% free throw shooter. He shoots the front end of the one and one. 33 seconds left to go. Free throw in and out. No good. Rebound to Kelderman. Kelderman with the ball. Three players around him. He calls a timeout. Timeout on the floor. 28.8 seconds left to go in the game. Let's take a 30-second break. There are two ways to buy insurance. From a one-company agent locked into only those policies that his company sells. Or from Wilma Vanderberg at CIR Consultants in Sheldon. She doesn't sell for just one company. She represents several. So she can advise you on the best coverage at the best price. CIR Consultants is a full-line insurance service agency. They have the right company with the right policy for your insurance needs. Call Wilma Vanderberg at CIR Consultants in the Younger's Professional Plaza in Sheldon. She's not locked into just one company. 28.8 seconds left to go, and seated to our right is the Western Christian Coaching Staff. And I took my headphones off for a minute. And it is awfully fun to listen to other coaching staff to talk about what they would do in these kinds of situations, what they would do with other team players. And, uh, of course, uh, a couple of, of course, Western rooting for in-town uh, rival Boyden Hall. They don't play during the regular season, but they do scrimmage over the Christmas break. And uh, so a little bit of a rivalry there, but uh, they pull for each other come tournament time. Boyden Hall Comets with the basketball. Underneath the basket, length of the floor to go, 41 to 40. Ball is inbounded to Kelderman. Kelderman with the basketball. Kelderman spins through the trap, picks up the dribble. One point lead for the Boyden Hall Comets, and they will shoot two free throws with Sean Kelderman. Kelderman with seven points tonight. Six of them coming when he brought the Boyden Hall Comets back from six points down. Make that five points down to take a one-point lead. Kelderman came in averaging an even dozen. These are a couple of big free throws here for the Boyden Hall Comets. We've got a timeout on the floor. Timeout on the floor, charged to Rock Valley. Let's take a one-minute break. Be Specialists of Iowa, a company with great respect for its employees and a management team with a reputation for fairness and professionalism, is currently looking for production and material handling personnel to fill new positions created by increased production. 
Shifts available are 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. and 9.45 p.m. to 6.15 a.m. Starting wages range from $7 an hour to $10.11 an hour, depending upon qualified skills. For more information, contact Beef Specialists of Iowa and Hartley. Beef Specialists is an equal opportunity employer. RV Central in Sheldon has more to offer, including service. Over 150 new and used units to choose from. Motor homes, mini homes, fifth wheels, travel trailers, fold downs, pickup campers, and toppers. Also find Excel's number one dealer. Now there's financing available on all RVs with approved credit. A service department that works on all makes and models of units they sell and a large parts and accessories department. Combine all this with a good price from Standard Joe and you've got the best deal in the country. RV Central, Highway 60 South in Sheldon where they service what they sell. Here's the situation. 21.1 seconds left to go in the ball game. Sean Kelderman to shoot two free throws. It's the double bonus the rest of the way for the Boyden Hall Comets. One and one the rest of the way for the Rock Valley Rockets, at least for one more foul. First free throw by Kelderman is off the side of the rim. No good. He's got another one coming his way. So the timeout by Rock Valley ice Kelderman enough that he misses the front end. Normally a 70% free throw shooter. Second one is up and good. Eight points for Kelderman, seven of them here in the fourth quarter. Rock Valley brings the ball into the front court. Ben Kickerick's with it. Ben Kickerick's trying to get the ball off to Ranch on. We've got a timeout on the floor. Twelve seconds left to go in this ball game. Rock Valley uses up a timeout. With 12 seconds remaining, they've still got one in their pocket. And let's take a 30-second break. You've got to get over to O'Brien County Implement in Sheldon and drive a new Holland 70 Series Genesis tractor. Experience the most comfortable cab in the industry. Enjoy the Sidewinder movable console. Feel the power of the Genesis engine. Turn on a dime with the super steer axle. Admire the smooth, quiet power shift and appreciate the best warranty in the business. Genesis, the 70 Series. At O'Brien County Implement in Sheldon, you've got to drive it. Twelve seconds left to play in this ball game. Now the question, do you go for the tie or the win? What a situation to be thrown in as a superintendent. As remember, Bob Miller is not coaching this ball game for the Rock Valley Rockets. He was caught, or uh, they ended up uh, being suspended for at least one ball game. And uh, taking over the reins, Coach Les Dalma former Northwestern coach and now superintendent at Rock Valley. Rock Valley to inbound, 12 seconds to find a shot. Keep Ranshaw into the front court, 17 seconds left. Shot on the baseline by Lang, up and good. Six seconds, and we've got a timeout on the floor. 4.1 seconds left to go. Rock Valley goes for the, tie, or for the tie, and they get the tie on a basket by Jesse Lang with 4.1 seconds left to go. A lot of time left as Boyden Hall will have the basketball now. Length of the floor to go, 42, 42 hours score. Let's take another 30 second break. If you are the one woman in 10 who has had mastectomy surgery, you'll want to see the exquisite styles of natural wear breast forms and bras by Camp. Developed in response to the needs and desires of women who have had surgery, breast forms are available in all of the popular styles. In Hartley and Cherokee, the trained and caring staff at Mediquip are sensitive to the special needs of the mastectomy patient. Phone 1-800-572-5482 for an appointment. 22 points tonight for Jesse Lang and the Rock Valley Rockets went to the well one more time and came away with a bucket as Jesse Lang has an even 20 points this evening. And uh, inbounding the basketball will be Sean Kelderman. 4.1 seconds left for the Boyden Hall Comets to find a shot. Ball will be inbounded to Mark Denbaston. Three seconds, two, one. Kelderman, desperation, three-quarter court shot off the mark. No good. We're headed to overtime. 42-42 hour score. Take a one-minute break and be back with three more minutes of action right after that. Mark Gall, the new manager at Joyce's Food Store on Highway 60 downtown Sheldon, has some fantastic manager specials this week to lure you into the store to meet him. Here are some of the great manager specials for this week. Best yet macaroni and cheese dinners, just 19 cents. 
Body single roll paper towels, just 69 cents. Thompson Green Seedless Grapes, just 69 cents a pound. And Shenandoah Ground Turkey, just 39 cents a pound. All that this week, the new manager specials at Joyce's Food Store on Highway 60, downtown Sheldon. Farmers, consider making changes in your livestock operation. Change to your local company. The Farmers Co-op Elevator of Sheldon, Matlock, and Hospers is your company. Let them help you keep the profits from your livestock in your community. Why not utilize the many services and programs they have, like hog production networks and marketing agreements, beef marketing programs and confinement feeding, plus broiler and layer production contacts and much more. Contact the Farmers Co-op Elevator, Sheldon, Matlock, and Hospers. Find out how they can help you. Forty-two to forty-two, our score as regulation has ended. Here's the lineup for both ball clubs. First of all, for the Boyden Hall Comets, Nate Dornboss, Mitch Westra, Sean Kelderman, Mark Den Beston, and Troy Wolber. For Rock Valley, Keith Ranshaw, Jesse Lang, Bruce Van Kickerick, Mark Wolfswinkel. Tip is controlled by Rock Valley. Here comes Ranshaw. Ranshaw over to Van Kickerick. Van Kickerick's into the lane. Kicks back over to Ranshaw. Ranshaw with the ball at the free throw line. Drives in over to Lang. Baseline jumper up and good. Jesse Lang with the two-point basket. And the Rock Valley Rockets take a two-point lead. 44 to 42. 335 left to go in this first overtime. Pass top of the key over to Westra. Westra back over to Kelderman. Kelderman with the ball on the right wing. Kelderman will drive in. Two players around him. Finds... Den Baston. Den Baston with the basketball. Bounce pass over to Westra. Westra with the basketball. Back over to Wolver. 3.20 left to go in the ballgame. Overtime period. Tied 42-42 after regulation. Shot by Westra. We've got a jump ball. Alternate possession. Goes with the Boyden Hall Comet. Jump ball. 3.14 left to go. Overtime. 44-42. Rock Valley with the two-point lead. Off a basket by Jesse Lang to open the overtime period. Mitch Wester inbounds over to Kelderman. And the ball is tipped out of bounds. Last touched by Mark Wolfswinkel. 3.13 left to go. This is the second overtime for the Rock Valley Rockets in district play. Mitch Wester to inbound. Inbounds over to Dornboss. Back over to Westra. Westra with the ball on the floor. Passes over to Wolver. Swings it around over to Kelderman. Kelderman on the left wing with it. Kelderman. 17 feet from the basket, gives over to Den Beston, and Den Beston is fouled, and the foul goes against Keith Ranshaw. Ranshaw called for foul number three. And to the free throw line will be Mark Den Beston. Den Beston, with three points this evening, will be shooting for the tie. 3.01 left to go, overtime. Free throw is up and off the rim, no good. And another free throw for Den Baston. Official over to a talk with Keith Ranshaw. Now gives the basketball back over to Den Baston. Free throw on the way is up. This one is good. One point ball game. 43-44. Rock Valley with a one point lead. Under three minutes left to go in the first overtime period. Keith Ranshaw with the basketball. Ranshaw down to the right corner. Gives it off to Wolfswinkel. Wolfswinkel kicks it back outside to Johnson. Johnson bounce pass over to Lang. Lang with the basketball. Back outside to Ranshaw. Ranshaw with it. Down low to Lang. Lang thinks about turning into the player. Decides against it. Now gets the return pass. Shot by Lang is up. No good. Rebound on to Dornboss. Dornboss from our angle got away with a bump that time. As it is, Troy Wolber brings the ball into the front court over to Westra. Westra back over to Kelderman. Kelderman swings it back over to Wolber. Wolber back over to Den Baston. Remember, Boyden Hall is going without their leading scorer and leading rebounder, Dan Anderson. Mitch Westra with the basketball. Passes over to Kelderman. Kelderman loses the basketball. Tips it out of bounds. Last touch by Rock Valley. It'll be Boyden Hall basketball near the midcourt stripe. 2-11 left to go in the overtime period. Mitch Westford inbound. Passes into the backcourt over to Wolber. Wolber will bring the ball into the front court. Man-to-man -man defense applied by Rock Valley. Passes over to Westra. Westra on the right wing with it. Westra puts the ball on the floor. Now passes back over to Kelderman. Kelderman on the right wing. Kelderman down to the right side over to Westra. 17-footer off the rim. No good. Rebound taken down by Wolfswinkel. Wolfswinkel over to Van Kickerick. Van Kickerick with the basketball into the front court. One-point lead for Rock Valley. 
Then Kickerick left side with it. Then Kickerick passes out on top to Ranshaw. 1.39 left to go in the ball game. In this first overtime period, one point lead for the Rockets. They swing it around left side now to Wolfswinkel. Wolfswinkel back over to Ranshaw. Ranshaw back over to Lang. Lang back to Ranshaw. 1.25 left to go. Bounce pass right side over to Johnson. Johnson inside to Lang. Lang has it poked away by Kelderman. And the ball stays with the Rock Valley Rockets. Keith Ranshaw having trouble with cramps again. He will have to check out of the ball game. And checking back into the game will be Dykstra. Matt Dykstra to check back in. 119 left to play. In this overtime period. And the Rock Valley Rockets will inbound. Dykstra to inbound for the Rockets. 119 left to play in this overtime. Dykstra working against Denbeston, passes into the backcourt, picking it up as Aaron Johnson. 117 left to play. Johnson into the front court, working against Wolber. Wolber playing the defense, pass out on top to Dykstra. Dykstra with the basketball, working against Denbeston. Back over to Johnson. Johnson with the basketball. Under a minute left to play, and we've got a time, or foul call. One and one situation coming for Rock Valley now. Aaron Johnson to shoot a one and one. 44-43, that's foul number three on Troy Wolber. And to the free throw line will be Aaron Johnson. Aaron Johnson to shoot a free throw. He's a 67% free thrower. First one is up and good. Makes it a two point ball game. And another free throw on the way for Johnson. This one's going to be short and rolls down anyway. Aaron Johnson with the two-point basket. And the Boyden Hall Comets trail by three. Troy Wolber into the front court for the Comets. Jump stop. Passes over to Den Baston. Den Baston with the ball at the top of the key. Den Baston looking. Den Baston with it. Passes right side over to Kelderman. Shot pass down low over to Dornboss. Kicks back out to Kelderman. Kelderman into the lane, shot is up, no good. And the rebound taken down by Rock Valley. Rock Valley Rockets into the front court. Pass back over to Dykstra, swings it around left side of Van Kickerick. Rock Valley with a three-point lead, and they call a timeout. Timeout on the floor, 27.9 seconds left to go. Rock Valley uses up another timeout to set their offense. 46-43, Rock Valley with a three-point lead when we're back in 30 seconds. Northwest REC introduces a new 18-inch digital satellite system lease program. Now you can enjoy all the benefits of the amazing new DDS satellite system for under a dollar per day. The monthly equipment cost is only $13.55 and programming packages start at $15.95. Enjoy great family programming like Disney and Family Channels along with a wide variety of sports programming on DirecTV. Just call Northwest REC at 1-800-383-0476. The number again is 1-800-383-0476. The choice is clear. Direct TV. Well, the winner of this ball game will move on to the Substate Final on Saturday night. And right now, the Rock Valley Rockets in the driver's seat. Up 46 to 43. And the Rock Valley Rockets with the basketball. They will inbound. They're going to have to do it without their starting point guard, Keith Branshaw, who had to left leave because of leg cramps. Rock Valley inbounding. Ball is inbounded. To number 42, Mark Wolfswinkle. Wolfswinkle over to Van Kickerick. Back over to Wolfswinkle, and we've got a foul called. And Van Kickerick will go to the free throw line and shoot a pair of free throws. Van Kickerick, just a 44% free throw shooter. And he needs one of these to make it a two-point or two-possession ball game. Two-shot situation coming. A double bonus for Van Kickerick. First one is up and good. 47 to 43. 21.6 seconds left to go. Has Van Kickerick with three points now. Second free throw misses everything. Dead ball situation on the air ball on the free throw and that'll go over to the Boyden Hall Comets they have 21.6 seconds left to find four points to possession ball game into the front court this is Wolber, Wolber drives in lays it up, no good 
Rebound taken down by Dornbos. Dornbos shot up no good. And Dornbos will go to the free throw line to shoot two. Dornbos this evening 0 for 4 from the free throw line. And he will go to the free throw line to shoot two. He needs to make at least one of these. Free throws up and good. Five points for Dornbos. Corey Sanders checked back into the ballgame for Boyd and Hall checking out Mitch Westra. 11.8 seconds left. So the Boyd and Hall Comets, after this shot either made or missed, they need to commit a foul or get a steal. Shot is up, misses everything. And the ball goes back over to the Rock Valley Rockets on the air ball. Nate Dornboss to check out of the ballgame. Rock Valley Rockets to inbound, length of the floor to go, 11.8 left to play, and Rock Valley to inbound. Ben Kickerick looking to trigger, Ben Kickerick gives it in, thrown away by Boyden Hall. Boyden Hall comments with it, shot is up by Wolver, no good, rebound down to Sanders, and Sanders is fouled. Six seconds left to go in this ball game. And the Boyden Hall Comets come away with a steal and then are fouled on the shot attempt. Corey Sanders going for the, or pardon me, uh, Troy Wolber going for the quick two rather than the three-point basket. And to the free throw line to shoot two will be number 15, Corey Sanders. Sanders just a 46% free throw shooter. Nate Dornboss checking back into the ballgame for Troy Jansma. Six seconds left to go. Rock Valley leading by three. Sanders to shoot two free throws. First one is up and no good. Free throws have been a problem for Boyden Hall all evening long. They were five for 12 at the end of the third quarter. Second free throw by Sanders is up and good. Two-point ballgame. Rock Valley to inbound. Then Kickerick to Traeger, and he's going to call a timeout. Timeout on the floor, six seconds left to go in this overtime. Rock Valley with the basketball, length of the floor to go when we're back in 30 seconds. Farmers Mutual Insurance in Sibley provides dependable insurance protection and benefits. You can rely on Farmers Mutual Insurance in Sibley for high-quality coverage. Farmers Mutual Insurance belongs to you and the other members it insures. This local control keeps them responsive to your insurance needs. You can tell a good policy by its coverage and by the name it carries. Talk to the folks at Farmers Mutual Insurance in Sibley or one of their agents, Biker Ranking Insurance of Ireton and DeCoster Insurance in Hall. Totaling things up here, uh, the Boyden Hall Comets shot 20 free throws through regulation and made just eight of them. That figures out to 40% free throw shooting. And uh, they have been three for six here in the overtime period. And right now that's the difference in the ball game. As the Rock Valley Rockets hold a two point lead, 47 to 45, six seconds left to go in the first overtime. And Rock Valley with the basketball, length of the floor to go. Really all they need to do is get the ball inbounded and Boyden Hall will commit a foul. Rock Valley to inbound. Aaron Johnson will have the baseline to run. Johnson looking to inbound. Johnson gives it off to Van Kickerix, and Van Kickerix is fouled with 4.8 seconds left to go. And Van Kickerix will take the long walk to the other end of the floor and shoot a two-shot foul situation. Double bonus the rest of the way for the Rock Valley Rockets. 4.8 seconds left to go in this overtime. The winner moves on to the sub-state final while the loser will be done for the season. Another epic battle between these two ball clubs. Very rich in basketball tradition. First free throw by Ben Kickerick, no good. Boyden Hall, according to my records, with two timeouts left. Free throw up and misses, no good. Rebound on to Kelderman. Kelderman calls a timeout. 3.6 seconds left to go in this ball game. Boyden Hall will diagram a play, try and find a basket here with 3.6 seconds left. 47 to 45, Rock Valley with the two-point lead when we're back in 30 seconds. Alps Manufacturing Company in Sheldon currently employs just under 100 employees, producing men's and boys' Arizona jeans for J.C. Penney. 
If you are looking for the opportunity to become a part of a successful team with a chance to grow and expand your earning potential, ask for details at ALF's Manufacturing in Sheldon. They are taking applications at this time. Apply in person at ALF's Manufacturing Company in Sheldon. 3.6 seconds left to go in this overtime period. It was tied at 42 after regulation. Rock Valley in their huddle. Boyden Hall trying to diagram a play to find a shot here with 3.6 seconds left to play. 47-45, Rock Valley with the two-point lead. Rock Valley trying to knock off arch rival Boyden Hall. We'll see what kind of defense Rock Valley will set up in. Boyden Hall has one timeout left. Rock Valley will set up in what looks like a 1-2-1-1 zone defense full court. Now they'll fall back a little bit. Ball is inbounded to Denbeston. Three seconds. Two. Denbeston at half court launches it. No good. That's the end of the ball game with our final score. Rock Valley 47. Boyden Hall 45. Take a two-minute timeout, total things up, and be back with a recap from the Western Gym right after this two-minute timeout. Be Specialists of Iowa, a company with great respect for its employees and a management team with a reputation for fairness and professionalism, is currently looking for production and material handling personnel to fill new positions created by increased production. Shifts available are 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. and 9.45 p.m. to 6.15 a.m. Starting wages range from $7 an hour to $10.11 an hour, depending upon qualified skills. For more information, contact Beef Specialists of Iowa in Hartley. Beef Specialists is an equal opportunity employer. If you've seen Golden Harvest performance last year, you already have some great reasons to choose Golden Harvest this year, and many of you have. We want to thank our customers for their business. Our customers have been successful with our package of hybrids, including H2390, H2404, and H2485. Your Golden Harvest dealer has a good supply of these great performers, so you can get a great deal more performance on your farm. See one of these dealers, Terry DeGraft of Melvin, Tom Schutte of Sibley, or John Wolf of Hospers. Everyone's invited to the Hog Roast and Retirement Party for Abe Van Dyke at Ron Draco Motors this Friday, March 1st. Serving will be from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And while you're at Dranko's, check the rebates on the exciting new Chrysler Cirrus or Dodge Stratus, a $1,000 rebate. Buy a Chrysler Concord or Dodge Intrepid, get a rebate of $1,500. And the tough mid-sized Dodge Dakota at Drinkos qualifies for a $1,000 rebate plus an additional $500 rebate to Farm Bureau members. Never before have the savings been this good on these vehicles, and Ron Drinko Motors has the inventory. Come into Ron Drinko Motors, Highway 60 North in Sheldon, get all the details. And remember, the big hog roast is Friday from 11 to 3. Come in and wish Abe Van Dyke well on his retirement after 27 years at Ron Draco Motors. Enjoy a great sandwich. It's the Hog Roast and Retirement Party, Friday from 11 to 3 at Ron Draco Motors, Highway 60 North in Sheldon. Back at the Western Gym where the Rock Valley Rockets have unseated the Boyden Hall Comets as reigning district champs. Taking the win, final score, 47 to 45 in one overtime. Rock Valley now moves on to play West Bend Mallard in a ball game uh, Saturday night over at the Spencer Gym. And uh, the Rock Valley Rockets, we'll see if the Rockets have a little bit of gas left in the tank as this was their second overtime of the week. They'll have to win one more ball game to make it to the state tournament. And uh, they'll have to face a very good ball club in West Bend Mallard on Saturday night. And we'll have that game for you on KIWA. Rock Valley led this evening by Jesse Lang. Lang with 22 points to lead the way for the Rock Valley Rockets. He had only two points in the first quarter. He had only four points in the fourth quarter. But in between that, he sandwiched in 14 points, picked up another bucket at the beginning of the overtime period. And he ended up leading all scores with 22. Nine points for Matt Dykstra, six for Keith Branshaw, four for Aaron Johnson, and three apiece for Bruce Van Kickerix and Mark Wilswinkle for their total of 47 points. Boyden Hall was led by Dan Anderson with 21 points. He fouled out of the ballgame late in the fourth period, and that changed the complexion of the ballgame somewhat. Sean Kelderman ended up with eight points. 
seven of them coming in the fourth quarter. Five for Troy Wolber, four for Mark Den Baston, one for Corey Sanders, and one for Troy Jansma for their total of 45 points. Rock Valley just 11 for 26 from the free throw line for 44%. Rock Valley was not much better from the free throw line, though, as they were six for th or 13 for just under 50%. How did we arrive at this score? Well, everything seemed to be going the Boyden Hole Comets way at the beginning of the second quarter. They took a 10-point lead, 20-10, to 10, and led by 9, 22-13 to 13, with 6.39 left to go in the quarter. But from there on out in that second quarter, Rock Valley would score 8 points to Boyden Hole's 2 and narrow the difference down to 4, 25-21 at the half. Then in the third quarter, Rock Valley came out strong, tied the ball game at 27 and took a six-point lead at the end of the quarter, 36-30. to 30, And Rock Valley would push that lead up to seven, 38-31, before a, a two-point basket by Dan Anderson, and then five straight points. Make that six straight points by Sean Kelderman. Gave Boyden Hall back a one-point lead with 3.36 left to go in the game. A basket by Matt Dykstra for Rock Valley made it 40-39. to 39. Dan Anderson answered back with a two-point basket. And then a free throw by Sean Kelderman gave Boyden Hall a two-point lead, 42-40. to 40. Jesse Lang got two straight buckets. Or pardon me, Jesse Lang then got the ball down low with four seconds remaining in regulation. Turned around, hit the baseline jumper, sent it to overtime. And then Boyden Hall without their starting big man on the floor, Dan Anderson, who was sent to the bench with five fouls. Uh, the uh, Rock Valley Rockets were able to take control of the ball game, led by uh, three, 46-43, and then 47-43 on a Bruce Van Kickerick free throw. Boyden Hall would try and narrow the gap down. They would get a free throw by, Matt, uh, by Nate Dornboss and also a free throw by Corey Sanders with six seconds left. They fouled with six seconds left. Rock Valley missed both free throws. Boyden Hall had a chance to shut, set up one last attempt. And with 3.6 seconds left, they inbounded the ball to Mark Den Baston. Den Baston didn't see anyone open, took it to half court, launched a half court shot over the top of the backboard, and the Rock Valley Rockets escaped with the district win, and they will advance on to the sub state ball game with West Bend Mallard on Saturday night. Rock Valley wins the battle of rebounds 34 to 32. Mark Wolfswinkel had eight, five for Bruce Van Kickerick for the Rock Valley Rockets, while the Boyden Hole Comets, Nate Dornboss had six, also Sean Kelderman had six, Troy Wolber and Dan Anderson each had five apiece for the Boyden Hole Comets. And finally, shooting from the field, neither team shot the ball very well at all. Boyden Hall 15 for 44 from the field for 34% overall, while Rock Valley was 19 for 48 from the field for 40%. Boyden Hall 4 for 11 for 36% from beyond the arc, while Rock Valley was 3 for 11 for 27% from beyond the three-point line. Rock Valley with 16 turnovers unofficially. Boyden Hall committed 13 turnovers on the night. That is according to our unofficial turnover count. And that's going to do it for our ball game for this evening as the Rock Valley Rockets win by two, 47-45 in overtime over the Boyden Hall Comets. And they will now play West Bend Mallard on Saturday night for the trip to state in Class 1A. Tomorrow night, don't forget, Sheldon versus Western. Boys basketball action, Class 3A District Finals. We'll be back here at Western for that ball game, and we'll be on the air at 645 with the pregame for that one. And that's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. Thanks to all our sponsors for making our tournament broadcast possible. Also, thanks to Bob Grody back at the KIWA Studios as he kept us updated on what was happening outside of the Western Gym. And also, thank you to you, our listeners, for tuning in to tonight's tournament basketball game. Let's send things back to the KIWA 